So, welcome everybody to this Lightning Talks uh, show. And uh, the format will be this. We have five talks, we have 60 minutes. Every talk is 10 minutes, we have two minutes to switch. Now, during these two minutes, you will have to vote for how good you think this talk is, and then immediately hand in your vote. So, the votes should be handed in before the next speaker begins. You will hand this vote to the two KDAB guys who run around collecting them. That's the one standing in the middle, and that's the other one standing near the window. And in the meantime, while you do that, we will switch speakers here at the front. And uh, I will not present anything about the particular talks. I will let the speakers do them themselves. But I will introduce the first one in the chain, and that is Alan Alpert. Thank you. Yep. Well, so this talk, since the lightning talk, we'll skip the biography. This talk is about the new QML runtime, a new tool being provided in Qt as of Qt 5.2. And it's what QML viewer scene originally should have been. So in the beginning, people had QML code. But back then, when the Earth was newly formed, they didn't have anything to run it with. So there's always been the problem of you have your QML code that you wrote or that you found online, and then you have to run it in order to see the effects, in order to play with it. So some people for development have been using QML scene, which is there as a development tool. But that's just there as a development tool. What if you want to actually run your QML somewhere else, like on an end user computer, or actually deploy it as QML? You couldn't do that until now, until the QML runtime, which is basically just a shell like you would have with your user bin Python or your user bin Perl. It just runs stuff. As you can see, there, hopefully, there's the um, classic hash bang and then executable path for being able to have the file execute itself using the QML interpreter. And then you can just run this file. You can run, and run this file on the command line, and it will work. And then, hopefully, that will be your QML application. But this might make you wonder, well, what's the difference between this and QML scene? What, why wasn't QML scene and viewer just like this? And there are a lot of sort of some issues with QML scene uh, that meant you couldn't use it like this. And the QML runtime fixes all of those. So the first one I issue is about how opaque QML scene was. What, what exactly is QML scene doing when it runs things? It's not entirely clear. It actually had a lot of code doing its own sort of thing. But now, as of Qt 5.1, we have the QQML application engine, which is a way to run just generic QML applications. And this is what powers the QML runtime. The QQML application engine uh, not only provides an easy way to write your own C++ uh, shells for your QML applications, but it also provides clarity so that when you real find that you've run into some limitation and you no longer can have a pure QML application, you can go from using the QML runtime to run it to your own C++ shell with custom code. And to get the same effect as QML runtime, you use a QQML application engine. Those features are easily available and clear as to what steps are needed to transition from the QML only entry point to the C++ entry point. This includes some features such as uh, setting up the translation and uh, dummy data where necessary. Another problem with QML scene is that, from the name, it's scene graph. It's there just to run scene graph snippets of QML. And this obviously is not good enough for a generic QML runtime. It should be able to run any QML file. As you can hopefully see, this QML file is not scene graph. In fact, it's for some custom application that has its own import and its own types. And yet this can be run with the QML runtime. And the way it does it is configuration files, like this one. This is an actual configuration file for the QML runtime, which explains how it should encapsulate scenes where the root object is a QQuick item. By doing this, if you have any sort of custom components that won't visualize themselves, or that needs some extra help, like having the window created for them, you can define the partial scene and the container QML, and then it will be able to run 
those partial snippets, which is useful both in the case of um, when you're you know, looking at partial components like you will in your Qt Kick application, or when you have uh, non-visual QML files which you wish to visualize. So by being configurable and not relying on the QML file being scene graph, this makes it a much more generic runtime that actually runs QML. And as you can see, the Qt Quick support, that's in the configuration file. It's not baked into the binary. You can actually give a custom configuration file to the QML runtime that doesn't do that for some reason. And then it doesn't have the Qt Quick support because it is generic. And finally, one of the best things about it is that you're allowed to use it because you didn't have that with QML scene. As I said, QML scene was a development tool, and as much as people liked using it, it just wasn't supposed to be relied on for actual deployment of your application. But with the QML runtime, I can see a future where the QML runtime binary is a package in your distribution or is something that you can expect to find or install on the system. And once that happens, you will be able to have packages which depend on that, files where the root file looks something like that, and then it can be placed in just user bin on Linux or wherever you want to install your initial application executable. And then you can deploy apps, use QML-only apps, using this QML-only entry point for those cases where you just don't need C++. Maybe it's a very simple visualization. Maybe the logic is so trivial you can write it in JavaScript. So this finally gives you a QML-only entry point for applications where that's what you want. And of course, let's have an example. It's a very simple concept, and that makes the example very simple as well. So the idea being that you can just have a, f a file you click on, and it runs something. And this, <laughs> it sounds simple, but this was actually forbidden before, unless this was pointing to a C++ file. But what it's pointing to is just this QML file with a hash bang up top to say what to ex execute it with. And of course, this um, to do a good, cute, quick file with the generic runtime, you get to control the window parameters with the window item instead of having those controlled by command line arguments to QML scene. Hands up if you knew that QML scene had command line arguments. Two people, excellent. Well, that shows you just how opaque it was. Um, but yes, and to continue the example, you can run a QML file just like that. It's very similar to QML scene. This is new. You couldn't do that with QML scene. Uh, you can actually have your files be executable like you would with a Python or Perl script. So when you need to write those simple, trivial GUI applications, there's finally a scripting language, basically, for that, which is really simple. So that's the QML runtime. It's a QML only entry point for your QML applications. It allows the simple things to just run. And in the future, we're hoping that it will allow the simple things to deploy across various operating systems. I only know the process for Linux, but for other operating systems, I'm sure they have something similar where you'll be able to deploy QML only applications. No more need for that C++ shell template that you had to have back before Q5.2. So now you have your time to cast your vote. Uh, the topic was a QML runtime. My name is Alan Alpert. Five is the high number for good presentations. That should be the only one you need to know about. And of course, your assignment over the next few days is to start writing pure QML apps, those cute little timers or utilities. And you now know you'll have something you can run them with.